When creating Excel dashboards, we can spend a lot of extra time aligning and resizing charts and shapes. So in this video, I'm going to share seven tips for the Quick Access Toolbar that'll save you time with these tasks. All right, so here we have an Excel dashboard and we're going to look at seven different tools and features of Excel that you can add to the Quick Access Toolbar to make it faster and easier to work with all these shapes and charts and slicers on the sheet here. Now, if you want to learn how to create this dashboard and the pivot tables and pivot charts that are behind it, I do have a separate video on an introduction to pivot tables and dashboards. I'll put a link to that in the description below. So the first uh, item we're going to look at is the Select Objects tool. And I've already added it here to the Quick Access Toolbar. You can see it right here. I'll first show how it works and then I'll explain how to add it to the Quick Access Toolbar. So when we click select objects, that's going to toggle on the select objects mode. And this is very similar to PowerPoint where we can left click and hold and draw a box around shapes. And then when we release the left mouse button, that will select the sheets, I'm sorry, the objects that we've uh, selected there, we've drawn the box around. So this is great if you want to select multiple objects, like if we want to select all the charts and slicers on the sheet here, we can just draw a box around it and that will select all of those objects. One thing to note here, it does work similar to PowerPoint. So if you only select around part of an object, it's not going to select that object. You do have to select around the entire object to select that object or multiple objects. So to add select objects to your Quick Access Toolbar, you can uh, right click anywhere on the Quick Access Toolbar and choose Customize Quick Access Toolbar. That will open up Excel Options and the Quick Access Toolbar tab. And over here in this drop down, we're going to select all commands. And that'll take a few seconds to load all the commands here. And then you'll see all of these here. And we're going to look for select objects. Now, this is a very long list. One little shortcut here is you can hit the S key or S E on the keyboard to jump down to uh, the items that start with S. And then we'll find select objects. It's this one right here with the little arrow pointer. And then you just click add and that will add it. I already have it there, so I can't add it, but that'll add it to your quick access toolbar. Hit OK and then you'll see it appear. One other important thing to note with select objects is when you have it toggled on like I do right now, you can't select any cell. So if I click over here in the grid and try and select a cell, I can't select a cell until I toggle it off. So I'll click it again to toggle it off and now I can select cells and edit formulas. Next up, we'll look at the align objects features. So as you can see right here, these two slicers are not aligned. And let's say we want to align those. We could either use select objects to select both of these, or we can select one of these slicers, hold the control key, and then select another slicer. And then we can go to the format, or in this case, the slicer tab up here. And you'll see in the align dropdown here, we could align these to the left, to center, align right, and we have all these alignment features. If we right click this button and choose add to quick access toolbar, that'll add it right up here to the QAT. And then we can access these uh, buttons at any time. And this is nice because when you're selecting different objects, uh, different tabs will appear up here, different contextual tabs. So for example, if I was to select a uh, chart here instead of a slicer, you can see we get different tabs here. And I can go over to the format tab where I can then find the align objects dropdown. So depending on what shape you have selected, you'll have a different tab up here. But when you add the, uh, the aligned options to the Quick Access Toolbar here, then you can uh, access this from any time. And these will be enabled once you select multiple items. So if we go back to the slicers here, I'll select this item, hold Control, select this item. Now all these are enabled. And if I just want to align left, I'll just click that and that'll align my slicers to the left. The selection pane is another great feature to add to the Quick Access Toolbar. So with any shape or chart selected, you can go to the Format tab, and then we have the Selection Pane button right here. And clicking this will toggle on or allow you to view the Selection Pane. And this is one I like to add to the Quick Access Toolbar. So just right-click it, Add to Quick Access Toolbar, and then we can toggle that Selection Pane on or off at any time, with, again, without having to navigate to the Format tab. If you're not familiar with the Selection Pane, it's a great tool. Uh, first of all, it lists all of the shapes or objects on the current sheet. So you can see all of those objects in our dashboard right here. You can also select an object here and that will select it on the sheet, as you can see over here. You can double click to rename that object. You can also click this icon to temporarily hide the object there and then uh, click that again to make it visible. You can also show all or hide all objects. 
And you can also rearrange objects, which is really nice. So for example, right here, I have this speech bubble. I'll click it uh, to select it. It's actually behind this chart right here. So we can't currently see it. So I might want to move it up and you can either select uh, or left click and hold to move items up or you can use these little buttons here and that will move this up and bring it in front of chart nine. And now we can see that annotation or that text box right there. So the selection pane is a great tool for dashboards to help you organize and uh, show and hide objects as needed. Next, we'll look at bring to front and send to back. So again, if you select any shape or uh, chart here, you can go to the shape format tab. And then we have the bring forward or send backward options. And in these drop downs, we have bring to front and send to back as well. And you can add all of these to the quick access toolbar. Or what I recommend doing is adding the ones that you use the most. So if you wanted to add the drop downs here, you can just hover over the drop down and then right click add to quick access toolbar. That's going to add the drop down there with both of these buttons here. And then it's a split button. So if you click uh, just the left side of that, that will perform send backward. I like to uh, just have the send to back button up here. So in order to do that, you can just uh, click the drop down and then right click on send to back, add to quick access toolbar, and that will just add the single button here. And this is the one I tend to use the most. So for example, in that previous example, if we had this uh, shape selected here and uh, we can just click send to back to then send that to the back if we don't want to see it. And if we want to see it and uh, just move this chart behind it, we can select the chart and then hit send to back there. And now we'll have the text box in front of the chart. So that's the one I use most often and keep that one up there. If you add some of these and you don't want them here, you can just right click remove from quick access toolbar and that will remove the items as well. Changing font, fill, and line colors is another task we do very frequently when creating dashboards. So it's easy to add those to the quick access toolbar. Uh, for font and fill, you can go to the home tab here, just right click the uh, font uh, color drop down and hit add to quick access toolbar, or I should say right click the button. Same with the fill color here. So now we have font and fill colors up here. And then for line color, just first select any shape, either a chart or a shape, go to the format tab, and then we'll have the shape outline here. Again, right click, add to quick access toolbar. And again, this just allows you to access any of these buttons without having to navigate to the specific tabs that you can find those features on. If I had to pick one of these, I would pick uh, the line color. This is great because again, if you have a chart or a shape selected, you can just quickly go here. You can hit the drop down to uh, first maybe select a color if you want to bring more attention to this. And then you can hit the drop down again to also change the weight or the thickness of that line so we can beef it up and make it a little uh, thicker there and really stand out. And that's all can be done from the quick access toolbar again without having to navigate to the format tab. Next, we'll look at snap to shape and snap to grid, which are two great features to help you both resize and align shapes. So uh, first thing we'll do is just select a shape. We can select a shape here and then we'll go to the uh, format tab. And in the align dropdown, we have these two options for snap to grid and snap to shape. Now I tend to like snap to shape the most, but they kind of come as a pair here. And what I mean by that is uh, first I'll just add them to the quick access toolbar. So right click, add uh, snap to shape there, go here and uh, snap to grid. We'll add both of those. Snap to shape allows you to uh, essentially move shapes and align them with other shapes. So if I turn that on, I'll go ahead and click it. It's a toggle, we'll turn it on. And as you can see here, these two slicers are not aligned. So if I just left click and hold this slicer and then move it over, it's going to align to the other shape. You can align it to other shapes. So I can move it down here. You can move it here as well. You can see it's kind of snapping around and aligning to the other shape. So if I just wanted to align to that slicer, I'll just move it there and release the left mouse button and it's aligned to the other shape. So this is a great feature when you have a lot of shapes like this on a sheet or a dashboard. Now the issue is that once you turn that on, as you can see here, the snap to grid also gets turned on. And when you toggle snap to shape off, snap to grid stays on until you toggle it back off. So that's why I said they kind of come as a pair uh, because unfortunately you kind of have to work through with both of them here if you don't want one of the specific behaviors. Snap to grid just snaps to the cells on the sheet. So we have snap to grid on and when we move our slicer around now, it's going to essentially snap to the different grid elements here. So the different columns and rows within the sheet is what it's snapping to now. So it might be harder 
to then align it to the other shapes unless the other shapes are all aligned to the grid. So you can kind of either do either or, or do both, but just know which mode you're in. So if I want to turn this off, I can turn that off. One other quick tip there for back on snap to shape. Uh, if you are snapping and you don't want to snap for some reason, you can hold down the Alt key to move into freeform mode, or if you're on the Mac, it'll be the Command key. And that'll allow you to move this in freeform mode, just kind of float around and place it anywhere you want, and then uh, release the left mouse button. And then again, if you release the Alt key or the Command key, then it'll be snapping to the shape. I do have a separate video that explains snap to shape in more detail. This also works with resizing shapes. So I definitely recommend checking out that video if you're working with dashboards and charts a lot and you wanna get your shapes all lined up perfectly. And finally, we'll take a look at toggling the grid lines on or off. So in this sheet here, we don't see the grid lines because all the cells are filled with a gray fill color. But if we go over to another sheet, we can see the grid lines here. And to toggle these on or off, we go to the View tab, and then you can check or uncheck the grid lines box. So if I click this now, that will turn the grid lines off, and now we won't see them outlined on all the cells. And of course, we can also add this to the Quick Access Toolbar. So just right click, add to Quick Access Toolbar, and we'll have our grid lines toggle right up here. And this is great if you can't remember that the grid lines uh, toggle is on the View tab and you're continually clicking on all these different tabs to find it. Uh, if you just put it in the Quick Access Toolbar, you can toggle it on or off from any sheet, again, regardless of which tab you're on up here. And one other quick tip here, whenever I have a chart or multiple charts on a sheet, I like to turn the grid lines off because it uh, just makes the sheet less busy looking and it brings more attention to the chart. So it just cleans it up a bit, cleans the look up a bit, and it'll bring, allow you to bring more attention to the chart. And finally, I wanted to leave you with a tip on how to quickly enable or disable all of these buttons for dashboards on the Quick Access Toolbar. Because you might be saying, John, these are awesome uh, features of Excel that I might use like once a month or something, but I don't necessarily want them cluttering my Quick Access Toolbar all the time. If that's the case, uh, one thing you can do is right click anywhere on the Quick Access Toolbar and then choose Customize Quick Access Toolbar. Again, that'll bring up Excel options for Quick Access Toolbar. And right down here, we have the Import Export options. So this will allow you to import, or in this case, we first want to export all of the buttons, the current setup we have here. Here's all the buttons that are currently on my Quick Access Toolbar. I can click this drop down and then click Export All Customizations. That'll prompt me to save this exported UI file in a location on my computer. And of course, you can rename these files and I recommend giving it a descriptive name. So if this is uh, QAT for dashboard or you could just name it dashboards or something like that, dashboard tools, whatever you wanna rename it there so you know what it is, then just uh, save that. I won't save that right now, but just go ahead and save that. It'll be saved on your computer and then you can import it back in the future. You can also import these on other computers. So if you have multiple computers, maybe your home computer versus your work computer, and you wanna have the same quick access to a bar everywhere, you can export that file and then uh, send it to another computer, put it on a share drive and import it back. So the import process is the same. You just click import. That'll prompt you to find that file that you just saved and you hit open. And when you do that, it's going to replace all of the buttons that you currently have on the Quick Access Toolbar with the buttons in that saved file. So I recommend if you have some defaults that you always use, first export those and uh, save those as kind of your favorites. And then you can uh, create other Quick Access Toolbars for other projects or you tasks that you work on periodically. So I hope that helps. Of course, if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below. And if you have any other quick access toolbar uh, buttons that you use frequently, feel free to leave a comment below as well. We'd love to learn those from you. So thanks again for watching. Have a great day and I'll see you in the next video.